Nearly a decade ago, there was a high school quarterback that was taking the country by storm. He was setting high school records and was considered to be one of the top quarterback recruits of his class. In just his second season, he was named the Pac-12's Offensive Player of the Year, finished 6th in Heisman Trophy voting, and led his team to the college football playoff. However, his next two seasons were a complete disaster, as his numbers took a drastic hit. He went undrafted and is yet to throw a pass in the NFL. Former Washington quarterback Jake Browning looked to be on the verge of becoming one of the best Pac-12 quarterbacks ever. Instead, he's one of the biggest question marks. Before we get to today's video, make sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you're watching this video, odds are that you love college football, and odds are you aren't subscribed to my channel. So make sure to subscribe to one of the best college football communities here on YouTube. I'm posting college football videos all off season, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. Also, make sure to drop a like on this video as well. It helps out with that YouTube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. Is there a player you'd like to see a future video on? Whoever it is, drop a comment down below and it could be my next video. We've seen a lot of top recruits put up video game like numbers in high school over the years. However, we've never really seen a quarterback put up the numbers that Jake Browning did. During his time at Folsom High School, he set a number of incredible records. He set national records for both touchdowns in a season with 91 and a career as he had 229 passing touchdowns touchdowns in only three seasons. He finished his career with 1,200 completions and nearly 17,000 passing yards. As a senior, he threw for 5,800 yards with 91 passing touchdowns. Browning became the first high school player to ever throw for 60 or more touchdowns or for more than 5,000 yards in three straight seasons. In his first varsity game as a sophomore in 2012, Browning threw for 700 yards with 10 passing touchdowns, setting a state record for touchdowns in a game. In 2012, he threw for 5,200 yards with 63 passing touchdowns. Again, he did all of this while as a sophomore. He managed to somehow top those numbers every year. In 2013, he was named the National Junior of the Year by Max Preps. He completed just under 80% of his passes for 5,800 yards and 75 passing touchdowns. Then, in 2014, he threw 91 passing touchdowns as a senior. He was viewed as one of the top quarterback recruits of his class, and he had a plethora of offers. But ultimately, he committed to Washington, and it didn't take long for him to see the field. He was named Washington's starting quarterback to begin the 2015 campaign. Browning became the first true freshman ever to start a season opener at quarterback for the Huskies. And it was just the second time ever in program history that a true freshman started a game at quarterback, with the other time coming in 1997. Browning started 12 games and had a pretty solid freshman campaign. He threw for just under 3,000 yards, the fifth most in a season in program history. Browning finished the year with 8 games of 200 plus passing yards, the fourth most in program history. In week 3 against Utah State, he threw for 370 yards, setting a Washington freshman record, including red shirts. He broke his own record later in the season as he threw for over 400 yards against Arizona State on the road. 2016 was when he had his coming out party and quickly emerged as one of the best quarterbacks in the entire country. It was quite the season as Browning became a household name. He finished the 2016 campaign throwing for 3,400 yards and 43 passing touchdowns. Not only was that number good enough for Washington's season record, it also tied the Pac-12 record as well. Overall, he finished second in the entire country in passing touchdowns and was seventh in the nation in passing efficiency. His season earned him Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year honors, and Browning also finished sixth in Heisman Trophy voting. Browning finished his season setting numerous Washington single-season records, including touchdown passes in a game, yards per attempt, touchdown passes per game, passing efficiency, and points responsible for. Browning emerged as a Heisman candidate after an insane performance against Oregon in Week 6. At that point, Washington was undefeated and it climbed all the way up to number 5 in the polls. On the road at Oregon, Browning completed 80% of his passes for 300 yards. He threw 6 passing touchdowns, setting a new Washington record. For good measure, he added 2 touchdowns on the ground, giving him 8 total touchdowns for the game, completely shattering the Washington record for most total touchdowns in a single contest. He tied his record just a few weeks later as he threw for 400 yards and 6 passing touchdowns against Cal. 
he was the only quarterback in college football that season to have two games with at least six passing touchdowns. Not only did Browning have a dream season, it was also the dream season for Washington. They finished the regular season with only one loss and made it to the Pac-12 title game. Against Colorado, Browning threw two touchdown passes and guided the Huskies to a blowout 31-point victory. For Washington, it was their first conference title since 2000. It was only the second time in program history they had 12 wins, with the other coming all the way back in 1991. It was also their first season with double-digit wins since 2000. After their incredible campaign, Browning and the Huskies made the college football playoff where they were set to face Alabama. Unfortunately, Browning and the Huskies just couldn't pull off the upset. They actually led 7-0 at one point and trailed by only 10 points entering the fourth quarter. But the offense just couldn't do anything after the first touchdown. Browning completed only 50% of his passes while throwing for 150 yards with two interceptions. Following the conclusion of the season, Browning underwent surgery on his right shoulder. The exact nature of the injury was unclear, but Browning's recovery time was expected to be only a few months. According to the Seattle Times, Browning injured his right arm in a November 19th game against Arizona State. According to the report, the team wanted to keep the injury under wraps not to expose the star quarterback to more potential risk from opposing defenses. Now, looking back at his game logs, his production certainly took a bit of a noticeable hit after that ASU game. In the three games that followed, he averaged only 186 passing yards a game after averaging 261 yards per game up until that point. He was also completing only 55% of his passes to close the season after he was completing 64% of his passes up until that point as well. I'm not sure if it was his surgery or something else, but Browning's numbers were drastically worse the following season. After tying the Pac-12 record for passing touchdowns in a season and finishing 6th in Heisman Trophy voting, Browning finished his junior season with only 19 passing touchdowns and 2,700 passing yards, and he posted those numbers in 13 games. Those numbers were nearly on par with his true freshman season. Over the final 7 games of the 2017 season, Browning threw only 5 passing touchdowns. Considering he threw over 40 the year prior, the fact he had only 5 over a 7 game stretch was just insane to think about. Washington also went 4-3 during that stretch after starting the season 6-0. It was still a pretty solid season for the Huskies overall, as they won 10 games and made it to the Fiesta Bowl. But after making it to the college football playoff the year prior, being named the Pac-12 Player of the Year, and receiving Heisman votes, it was a very disappointing season for Jake Browning. Unfortunately, 2018 didn't go any better, and in fact, his numbers were actually worse. Browning threw only 16 passing touchdowns in 14 games, tying his number from his freshman season. After he averaged more than 3 touchdowns a game during his sophomore year, Browning was barely averaging 1 passing touchdown a game during his senior season. His 10 interceptions also tied a career high, the same number he threw as a freshman. His efficiency rating was the lowest it had been since 2015 as well. Things really took a turn for the worse, as Browning was benched in the second half of an October loss against Cal. But he didn't lose his starting job, as he was sent back out there the following week. But his numbers in production just didn't improve at all after that benching. Over his final 5 games, Browning threw only 4 passing touchdowns. He had 2 games in which he threw for fewer than 200 passing yards. To put it kindly, he was nowhere close to the same quarterback he was a few years prior. Although his production was down yet again, Washington finished with their second straight season with 10 wins. They won yet another Pac-12 title and appeared in the Rose Bowl against Ohio State where they lost by only 5 points. But that marked the end of Jake Browning's Washington career. Overall, he finished his tenure with 53 starts, winning 39 of them, the most ever by a Pac-12 quarterback. Browning set numerous Washington season and career records, including career yards with 12,300, the fourth most in Pac-12 history. His 94 passing touchdowns were the 6th most in Pac-12 history as well. Browning was just one of 6 Pac-12 players to account for more than 100 touchdowns during their career, as he finished with 110. Overall, he's the best quarterback in Washington program history and one of the best quarterbacks in the history of the Pac-12 as well. Yet, it feels like he had a very underwhelming and disappointing finish to his career there. After he threw for 43 touchdowns in 2016, Browning threw for only 35 over his next two seasons. In 2016, he averaged 250 passing yards per game. 
but over the next two seasons, Browning averaged only 215 passing yards a game. He declared for the 2019 NFL Draft, where he went undrafted. Apparently, teams had major concerns with his arm strength. He ended up signing with the Vikings, who cut him after training camp, but was added to their practice squad. They told him they wanted to treat it like a redshirt year for him. Browning was waived by the Vikings during final roster cuts in September of 2020, but he was re-signed to the practice squad the next day. He signed a reserve future contract with the Vikings in January of 2021, but in August of that year, he was waived by the Vikings. Shortly after, Browning was picked up by the Bengals, where he spent the last two seasons on their practice squad. He's appeared in a couple of games during the preseason, but hasn't seen an NFL snap yet. He was actually elevated from the practice squad this past week, where he would have been the Bengals quarterback three or backup quarterback had something have happened to Joe Burrow. It's been quite the career for Jake Browning. He was one of the greatest high school quarterbacks we've ever seen, and looked like he was on path towards becoming one of the best college football quarterbacks of the decade. Instead, his last two seasons were forgettable, and he's yet to throw a pass in the NFL. Before you leave, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you love college football, this is definitely the place for you. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm posting videos all offseason, so make sure to subscribe if you call yourself a college football fan. Also, don't forget to drop a like on this video as well. It helps out with that YouTube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. Also, if there's a player you'd like to see a video on, drop a comment down below and that very well could be my next video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you all in my next video.